my friends. This is Nefer Kefri, the Positive Vibes artist, and I'm here today with a pen test and review of Buke notebooks. These are dot grid notebooks. They are made on bamboo paper, and they are 180 GSM. And that means they can take a lot of different type of artistic medium. I will be testing a wide variety of pens in this, and I will also be testing watercolors. Now this one is a gift. I'm gonna crack this open and show you. I will not be doing a pen test in this one because like I said, it's a gift. But these are at their um, store on AliExpress, and it came with these gold foil stickers, which are really pretty. I'm trying to get it to where it doesn't glare. And look at that lovely lunar moth. Let me see. I'll show it. Here we go. It's kind of hard to see because I have to use my ring light, but there's that sticker. Let me get out the other two again. there are the stickers. Now I'm going to open this so you can see the cover of the journal. I bought this one because this is for my daughter and her favorite color is orange. It is so difficult to find anything in orange. So when I see anything that even comes near to orange, <laughs> I get it for her. But I thought this was just lovely. There it is, and like I said, the paper is white dot grid, and it's a gift. I will not be taking it out of the box. But it says Mystical Mushrooms, and I just thought this was gorgeous. I saw this online, and I was like, if that is anywhere near close to orange, she will love it. And it is pretty close to orange. So there we go with that one. Now the other notebook I will be testing Let me set this one aside and let me put the stickers with it before I forget. This one I bought for myself and I saw this on Buca Notebooks Instagram when they announced that it was available in their shop on AliExpress. Here's the box. And it says, the future of paper is here. Premium, sustainable bamboo paper. Our mission has always been to reduce deforestation and to preserve our forests. Using innovative tree-free fibers, we will continue to develop products that create this change in the world. Forests for all forever, replacing tree with bamboo. Now, let's open her up. I have not, oh, I haven't even opened this yet because I wanted you to be able to hear my reaction in real time. Okay, first of all, there are more stickers and there is a stencil. Oh, this is so nice. Let me get the cover so I have something white to show it against. But we have here a ruler that goes up to um, 20 centimeters. And we have a protractor, and it also serves as a rainbow stencil. And we have various size circles here. We've got a sunburst, a flower, another flower, a fish. Um, this looks like a little fishy. Maybe a whale here and a heart. And um, perhaps a little bunny with lopsided ears and a star and some arrows and some squares. You know, these squares, they kind of look almost like they might fit the dimensions of the Hobonichi cousin. I am going to be in a cousin for the first time for 2023. And I'm thinking that this may fit the weeklies. I'll have to look and I will report back at the end of the video. But um, that is the stencil and it's really, uh, it's good quality plastic. I mean, look at how thick the plastic is, you know. It's a little bit flexible, but it does not easily bend. 
and that comes with the notebook. Really nice. This one also comes with stickers. I'll show them against the background of the lid. And we have here again, butterfly. Now this came, oh wow, this one came with five stickers. Okay, these are really nice. And another thing too, um, these stickers, I had to edit out a little section here because I dropped them on the floor when I first pulled them out of here and my dog picked them up with her mouth and they got dog slobber all over them and I had to wipe them off. The stickers survived the dog slobber. They're fine. So I was amazed that they survived dog slobber. So there you go. The stencil and the stickers. And this bag came with them. Now, I don't know which journal this bag goes with. Or if maybe they just threw it in the order. I don't know. But it's a, it's a velvet. Ooh. Oh, how nice. Look at that. It's a journal tassel. Huh. Um, it, look at that. That's so pretty. Um, here is the velvet bag. It has a little bit of velvet bruising here, but no big deal. I mean, it was included for free with the journal. You know, I am not going to complain. It is drawstring. And that's just the reverse of the vel velvet material. So there is no lining. There we go. That's really nice. Now we're going to look at the journal itself. And again, it is that ultra thick 180 GSM bamboo paper. I have another notebook by Buke. And oh, wait a second, there's something else in here. Um, <laughs> let me set this aside. Looks like we have some stickers. More stickers, planning stickers. I have another one of their notebooks, and um, it did come with these same planning stickers. Oh, and it came with this bookmark. And it says, Stop Wishing, Start Doing. Very pretty. And it also comes with an attachable pen loop. So the pen loop on these journals is optional. You can add it or not. Let me pull these out. And again, here's the pen loop. It is self-adhesive, so you just attach it to the back of the journal cover, inside back cover, if you would like a pen loop. And then here are the planning stickers, planner stickers. Those are quite nice. Ooh, look at these foil stickers. These are really nice. My other one did not come with the foil stickers. <laughs> but there you go. Another little nice surprise in here. And now we finally get to look at the journal. After looking at all this other stuff. Um, I'm in Texas, and shipping um, from China, it wasn't too bad. I didn't pay that close attention to the shipping, but I want to say it took like, uh, oh, sorry, my table is shaking, close to about three weeks. Sorry. I had to change my setup because my daughter is visiting, and her former bedroom is now my art studio. And so I had to move my table and a bunch of my stuff out so I could still do my work. But here is, okay, well, it says open, so I'm going to pull on this. Hopefully this, yeah, okay, it's not even glued on. 
This is the back of the journal. I mean, look, isn't that gorgeous? When I saw this, I was just like, oh my gosh, yes, I have to have it. Look at the spine. Oh my goodness. It's just beautiful. There's the gilded edges and look at the stamped gilded edge with the lunar phases. Isn't that fantastic? And I have a specific use in mind for this journal. Here is the cover. I am thinking of making this my ancestral grimoire. A grimoire is a magical book, magical practices, um, spells, recipes, your thoughts. I'll go into the grimoire. And there is a star on the ribbon. And there's a second ribbon here. Let me flip it open. Here is the elastic that will hold the journal closed. And we have a pocket. I'm just going to take a quick look inside just to be sure there aren't any more surprises because I mean this packaging well wait a second okay here we go it was full of stuff but nope there's nothing in there there we go and it should be dot grid and it is and the dots are um they're kind they're a little bit on the dark side I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can zoom in. You still can't really see it. But um they're a little they're a little bit dark, but but not overly dark. I mean, it doesn't bother me. And um here's the front and says this journal belongs to It is really nice. And because it's bamboo paper, you can't really um, thumb through it easily. The paper is kind of stiff because you are dealing with a thicker paper that can take wet medium. It can take watercolors, acrylic, gouache. So, um, yeah, hear that? That's from the foil. Now it seems like I'll be able to th thumb through it. And it might stick a little bit at a corner. You, you know, just carefully pry it apart if it does that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. The perfect journal for what I want to do with my ancestral grimoire. Uh, let me look at the other ribbon. All right, quick, it's probably just plain, yeah. But there are the two ribbon bookmarks. So that's what the journal looks like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna flip over to the back and I reserve the last page of any journal for the pen and paint test. Now, what I recommend is when you purchase a journal, even if you're purchasing from a company you've purchased from previously, like say Archer and Olive, for example, I'm an Archer and Olive affiliate. My affiliate code is on the screen plus down below. Um, I still do pen and paint tests in every journal I get, even if it's from the same company like Archer and Olive, Notebook Therapy. Buke. The reason being is because ever since the pandemic, I have noticed a major shift in manufacturing of journals and of other types of art supplies to where the quality is not 100% consistent. Um, my Archer and, Archer and Olive um, journals, for instance, they are 160 GSM. Now, they can take watercolor. I have a bunch of Archer and Olive journals that can take watercolor easily as long as you're not heavy-handed with the water but lately I've been getting some pilling on the paper and pilling is when you add the watercolor and as it dries the paper uh, forms little crumbs on the surface from the paper because the paper begins to disintegrate the pulp in the paper the water causes it to 
break apart a little bit. And so you get what's called pilling on the paper sometimes. That never used to happen. And it now has begun to happen a little bit in the Archer and all of it. It's still, it's not bad. I mean, it doesn't bother me. You know, I still use watercolor in my Archer and Olives. I just, on my test page, I just make a note with my watercolor splotches how the paper is behaving. And then I know how much water I can get away with using with it. I mean, that's the whole point to a pen test page, all right? So I recommend you always do that in your journals, even if it's from the same company you've ordered from before, because you just don't know how consistent the paper quality is going to be since the pandemic of 2020 because that has just affected everything. So what I do is I take that final page and devote it front and back for a pen test. Then as I'm using the journal, when I get to the last page, I just, if I don't want to see that pen test page there, I will sacrifice this page here and just use adhesive and put them together. And then I'll use adhesive here as well and put that last page of the journal and the end page together. And then you won't see that pen, pen test page as you conclude your journal. And also you have to remember that the first and the last page of a journal is not going to lay completely flat because they have to bring the glue up a little bit along the spine onto the end paper so the book remains together. You know, you're going to have the same thing in the front. And this is with any journal from any company. See, it's not going to lay completely flat. You see what I mean there? You've got that little bit of gl extra glue along that page holding that signature of paper into the journal. So again, what I do in the front is I usually decorate the inside of the cover and the nameplate, and then I will sacrifice this first page here because it's not going to lay right anyway, and I will just use adhesive and glue these two pages together, and then this will be the first spread in my journal. That's how I always do it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the pen and the paint test. That will be done on a time lapse for part of it. I'll do a little bit in real time just so you can see, you know, how I do it with the pens and with the watercolor. And but again, parts of it will be time lapse but just because it takes it takes me about I don't know, maybe 40 minutes or so to do a complete pen and watercolor test. And you don't want to be sitting here for 40 minutes watching me do that, you know? So I'll do a little bit in real time and then the rest will be time lapse. So I'll come back with my watercolors and my pens and we'll see what this paper can do. Alrighty, I am back with the start of my pen test. I'm going to note what I'm using here. These are all of my most favorite pens. And you'll see that I have a thing for fountain pens. From here on over are fountain pens. So in brief, this is the Energel Clina pen in 0.5. The Scribe pen by Ferris Wheel Press. And the ink in here is black tie. I have the Rollerball by Ferris Wheel Press. The ink in here is Grape Ice Pop. We have a Tool Gel Pen. You can find these in office supply stores. There is a Muji Gel Pen in 0.35. I have an Uniball Signo in 0.7. I have the Monoline Studio Archival Ink Pen by The Pigeon Letters in 0.9. I have the Fudenosuke Pen Soft Tip by Tombow. The Pentel Sign Pen. The Tombow Dual Brush Pen in N15, which is a black. And then beginning with the fountain pens, this one is really cool. This is by Arteza, and it is a disposable fountain pen. So once it's used up, that's it. It comes in a box of a dozen, and they're really inexpensive, and they write beautifully. Beautifully, They don't need any priming or anything. It's great. I love these pens. This one is by Jin Hao, 
from, I got it off of AliExpress. This is the 6006. No, it's not Jin Hao. It is Hero, H-E-R-O. And it's one of their pens that has the dragon on the clip, which is really cool. I have a Ferris Wheel Press ink and all the rest of these fountain pens. And when I test them, I will put the name of the colors on the screen so you'll know what is being tested. This is a Lovinger. This one is from the washi tape shop. If you can see, I kind of have a thing for purple. This is the Jin Hao, and this is the X450. I have two of these. I just ordered two more from the Jin Hao store. Um, they're pretty inexpensive. They range in price from about $5 to $9. And they are really nice fountain pens. They write beautifully. So I highly recommend these. This is Monte Verde. This also has a Ferris Wheel Press ink in it. I forget which color. Again, I will note it on the screen when I test them. This is another Jin Hao X450. And this is Ferris Wheel Press fountain pen. So there we go. I will be testing all of these and then I will do the watercolor test. And a couple of these I'll do in real time just so you can see, you know, how long it takes me to test a single pen and then the rest will be all in time lapse. So here we go and what I do is I will use that pen and simply write out the name of the pen and then right next to the name of the pen I will draw a little square and I will color it in with the pen and that is to test to see if the pen bleeds through the paper. First I'm using the Tombow dual brush pen to create the title for my pen test page. And I am a lefty. <laughs> so the angle is probably a little different than what you're used to seeing on most journaling pages because us lefties are clearly a minority, especially our female lefties. Now this is an older pen. It is slightly frayed. So that's why you're getting kind of a little fuzzy edge. And then again, I create a little square and I will put as much ink as I can into that square. Just go over it three or four times from various directions. Because again, I'm trying to create bleed through just to see how much the paper can take. And as you can see on the other side, there is nothing there, so hey. The Tombow Dual Brush Pen passes the test. And now we'll go on with a pen at a time on time lapse. Okay, I'm just going to go through here, and next to the names of the pens, I'm going to write down the name of the color ink. Again, with the exception of one color, these are all by Ferris Wheel Press. This one is Blushing Mushroom, which is so pretty. I'm just going to call it Blushing Mushy because I ran out of space. And let's see, I actually have my code here of, to tell me what's in what pen. The washi tape fountain pen has Stroke of Midnight. So let me 
me write that in here. And that's always good to know, not only the type of pen you're using, but the color ink is really important because different ink colors have different consistencies and will affect the paper in different ways. And again, I apologize if the camera is shaking a little bit. Again, it's attached to my table because right now that's what my setup is. My daughter has come for a visit and her room is now my studio. So I've had to take my studio apart. Um, okay, the pink fountain pen has got a shade of blue Ferris wheel ink in it. And I have two shades. I don't know which is which here. So this is a darker, a darker blue. I'm just going to write blue in here. And then I'll look it up later for the exact shade and put it on the screen in the video once I edit this. So you'll know exactly what that color is that's in this pen. For this part of the pen test here. And let's see. The Jinhao purple pen, I remember, has Midway the Magnificent. Because this is a really pretty bright magenta color. It does not have a shimmer. It's a little bit variegated. So it's just it's just gorgeous. The Teal Jinhao X450 has blue barrel tonic ink in it, which is another really pretty color. And I'll just put down that it's blue barrel T for tonic. The Lovinger pen has Queen Aluminum in it, which is a shimmer, variegated ink. Don't know if you can see that too well, but it is a gorgeous, gorgeous ink. I love it. So here is Queen Aluminum, again written in real time. Another thing about fountain pens, different fountain pens are going to feel different on the same paper. So if you're into fountain pens, it's good to have a little variety of them. Okay, let's see what else is missing here. Uh, that's it. I've got all the colors written down. And the Ferris wheel rollerball is grape ice pop. And there you go. But here are the pen tasks. And now I'm going to flip it over and see what blood through. Okay, we have a little bit here, so I'll just put my finger on it. We've got Blushing Mushroom from the Hero 6006 fountain pen. Bleeds through a little bit. Uh, the Stroke of Midnight in the Washi Tape Shop fountain pen. Bleeds a little bit. And also Queen Aluminum in the Lovinger will bleed a little bit. Again, that's when you're using excessive ink, which typically you're not going to use when you're writing. You know, I just do that just for my own curiosity. You know, maybe I want to sketch something and use that ink and color it in. So that'll tell me if I have to be careful about bleed through. 
one of these actually bled through a little bit to the next page. That would have been up here. That's, that's grape ice pop. So that would be a dangerous ink. That one I would have to kind of be careful with. That was actually the first ink I ever bought from Ferris Wheel Press. And I loved it so much, I used it for a whole year and never bought another color until just recently. But that's the pen test. Now what I'm going to do is the bottom part of the page here is going to be a watercolor test. What I do for the watercolor test, I will be using a great deal of water. I'll be putting enough water on the page to get the paper to glisten. And then I'll add the paint and see mainly how the paper takes the water. All right, so that will be that part of the test, and that will conclude my pen test and paint test page. All right, now that I've done the pen test in the Buke notebook, I'm going to do a watercolor test. Now, with watercolor in a journal, what you do is you have to monitor how much water you mix in with your paints. Different type of watercolor effects require different amounts of water, and that's when you're using watercolor paper. Let me grab a sheet here. This is watercolor paper. And if you look at it, it's like a very thick card. This is 140 pound watercolor paper. It's very inexpensive. And um, your journal paper is not like that. Your journal paper is 160 GSM. It's significantly thinner. It's got much more give to it. And the two issues with journaling papers is that the watercolor can cause the paper to pill, which means the paper will create crumbs. It'll disintegrate and you'll get these little paper crumbs on the surface. Or the watercolor can badly warp the paper to where it just looks awful. Another possibility is the watercolor can actually seep through to the other side and to the other sheet of paper. So when I do a watercolor test, what I want to do is I want to use the maximum amount of water I would ever use in a painting. And the only type of painting in which I use a great deal of water are galaxy paintings, which are my favorite type of painting to do. So I've got these colors by Kim Lee Bu Watercolors. And she's on Instagram and her website. I will link to it below. And it's also on the screen here. And uh, she does handmade watercolors. She makes her own watercolors from ground up pigments. And her colors are absolutely gorgeous. I am her brand ambassador and very proud of that. I love her paints. I'm going to use her paints for the galaxy now. Whenever you're doing a watercolor test in a journal, always be sure to put a piece of scrap cardstock underneath the paper. Please make sure it's cardstock because if you're doing a test with a lot of water, you don't want the water to seep through and ruin the next page in your journal. So I'll just insert the paper there and I will take my brush and dip it in. Now, when I do galaxies, I like to do a nebula in it and so I'll use the lightest color for the nebula and let me grab another brush right quick because for a galaxy to get the colors to really blend you need to wet the paper a little bit now on watercolor paper you can add quite a bit of water on journaling paper you really can't so just add enough to where you can see the paper slightly glisten this will help the watercolors to blend with one another on the paper. It'll help the pigment to move. Okay, so I've got kind of a little, the start of a little nebula there. And again, I'm doing this just to see how the paper holds up to the watercolor. Now I'll take another color. I'm going in with a, uh, this, that yellow is primary yellow. This is strawberry punch. I love this color. It is so gorgeous. Um, and again, I'm doing this just like I would if I were painting a galaxy. Now, I'm not using quite as much uh, paint as I would on watercolor paper because I know no matter how good this paper is in this journal, it's not going to hold up as well as watercolor paper. But I want to see how the paper will react to the paints. And now this is, I believe... 
ocean waves, ocean spelled O-S-H-A-N. Kim likes to create little puns with her color names, which is really cute. And this is kind of an intense turquoise, very, very pretty. And what I do with galaxies is I will create my nebula. I'll usually put a pinkish color around it if I'm using yellow, because I do use a lot of purple in my galaxies. And if the, if the yellow and the purple touch each other, you'll get mud. So the pink prevents that from happening. Now, here is the ocean waves, and I'm going to go in with a darker color. This is called Winter Sky, and it's basically a purple. Oh, look at that. See, it's spread out like that because I had a coating of clean water on the paper already. But look, isn't that gorgeous? And that's the neat thing about galaxies. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to show up either. I've had interesting symbols show up in my galaxies, completely unintentional. Animals, faces. But here is a galaxy. It's got plenty of water. Now I'm going to go back and add a second layer. In, journaling, in journals, I don't do that. I don't do a second later, layer, but since this paper seems to be reacting so well, I'm going to try it. And this is probably where we'll meet with disaster, but we'll see. The second layer will really brighten the colors. You see that? And you just add the same color to what's already on the paper. So I'm just adding more primary yellow on top of the first layer of primary yellow. Now I'm gonna go back over the strawberry punch. And again, we'll see. And then I will dry this with a heat gun. I will put the video on mute when I do that because they make so much noise. And then we'll come back and see how this held up. But I think it's going to be a real winner. I mean, look at all the paint I have on this paper. You can kind of see the glistening from the water. Now, I do see the paper having a slight tendency to pill a little bit. Sometimes, too, though, that can be the pigment. That can be the granulation of the pigment. So we'll see when I dry it how it looks. Adding a little bit more of the winter sky. And that color I know granulates. I think I skipped some ocean waves here, so I'm gonna put some of that up here. But look at that. I'm adding so much paint and water and it's just going everywhere and it's looking really, really good. So I think this journal is going to be a winner in terms of being able to use watercolor on these pages. That's basically how I judge all journals, by the way, since I am a watercolorist. If they hold watercolor well, I love that journal. So here we go. And again, there is a lot of water on here. I was not, did not use it sparingly, but there you go. You can see the glisten. And I'm going to go over it with a heat gun and we'll see how it does. All right, there you go. There is the finished galaxy painting using, as you saw, a lot of water. I had a couple of coats of water on the paper. I had a lot of water in the watercolors and I added not one, but two layers of watercolor to the paper. And here we have it, it's dry. That pilling of the paper I thought I saw was not pilling. It is the granulation of the watercolor. So that wasn't from the paper. And this is what you like to see because it creates more texture in your paintings. Granulating watercolors are really, really nice. Now I'm removing the cardstock. 
none of the water leaked through. Turning the page over, here we have the opposite side. No leakage, no bleeding. Now there is some crinkling, but hey, that's normal because this paper is was not made specifically for watercolor. So I'm okay with the crinkling. Uh, what I will do in using this journal, I'll just be sure when I do use watercolors that when I do it on one side of the page, I don't do it on the opposite side. I'll do something else here like collage or sketching, drawing, whatever. Just not any more watercolor on the opposite side. So that'll be fine. And I do want to point out there's this right here that you probably saw earlier in the video. I did that because um, this paper was actually slightly curved around the other pages in this signature along the spine here. And I pulled on, on it a little bit and it separated. But the rest of the journal is not like that. Okay, it lays completely flat and it's fine all the way through. I just wanted to make that clear so you don't think that there's a problem with the, um, the spine. There isn't. But this is the Buke notebook. This is the cover. This is available on their site on AliExpress. I will see if I can find the link to their store below and link to them, but it is a fabulous journal. I cannot wait to start using it. I mean, it's just so gorgeous. Here's the spine. I forgot to show you that. It is just gorgeous. There's the back. Yeah, this is actually going to be my astrology journal. I am going to, going to start a study of astrology for next year in 2023. And I needed a journal to put all my notes and observations. I just want to learn astrology well enough to be able to read my own chart without having to refer to a computer gener generated reading, you know. So I think it'll be a really handy thing to know. So thank you for tuning in. If you liked this video and found it helpful, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and follow me for more. And this is Nefer Kefri, the Positive Vibes Artist, wishing you all a blessed day.